Hi everyone, my name is Razine and it is a clear and cold and crisp Sunday night on the 2nd of March. There is a tiny crescent, waxing crescent moon up there, which will be setting in about an hour or two, and that's not going to cause a problem. It's We've had a run of clear nights recently, but I'm not going to say no. So I thought I'll get the equipment out, get imaging. Actually, this has been out since about 12 o'clock acclimating getting ready so it's all nice and cold ready to go the thing i want to image tonight is basically a rematch with a galaxy i took a photograph of previously and that is a intermediate spiral galaxy in the constellation of ken's venetici that is m106 otherwise known as the splendid galaxy but i've not had a splendid time with this galaxy um i took it previously with a mono camera and mono filters and I just didn't like I just haven't been able to get a photo of it that I'm happy with so I'm going to go off with the Stella Mira 86 ED2 quad here again with the ZW 585 and just a light pollution filter in there this time it's a color camera this time around something I'm more comfortable with <sighs> ideally I think I'd like to just use a UV IR cut filter but again we've got these street lamps around I have seen if I can get anything done with them, maybe get some shields put on them, I don't know, but we'll see what happens. At the moment in the Stella Mira, I have got the 0.8 times reducer in there, just a reducer, not a reducer flattener. As this is a quad telescope, it doesn't need a flattener, it's all built into it. For M106, I think I'd rather have this telescope at its native 602 millimeters, so I will take the reducer off. However, the problem with that is, it's gonna change the focus point. My plan is to get the polar alignment sorted, slew over to a nice bright star that I know, and then take the flattener out, the reducer out, put it all back together, so that way I'm already pointed at a nice bright star so I can get the focus sorted. It's time to get the polar alignment done, slew over to a nice star, and change the imaging train and get that all ready to go. Okay, so I finished slewing over to Aldebaran in Taurus now. Actually, that's going to be my best shout, I think, is the brightest star I can see right now. Here comes the fiddly part. So, I suppose I could put this... No, I can't park it, can I? The whole point of this was to be lined up. Well, just... Gonna have to do this. It's gonna be upset about me with that. Take that off, put that away before any dust can settle. Very nice. Done. There's another adapter in the box. Okay, so I've took the stock focuser, so this would be where the eyepiece holder would be, and bolted that. That can now go on there. And I can put the camera. It probably doesn't need this extension, but this small chip isn't going to cause a problem. Plus, this is typical astronomy threads. These are held on here like iron. That's going to be so hard to get off. Okay, so it's realized that it's been plugged back in. So 585, switch that on. Uh, main scope, 602 millimeters now. Do a preview shot of that then. The preview shot is not only going to be useful for the new field of view, but it's also obviously going to show me how badly out of focus this is. Whew. Really out of focus. Okay. Gotcha. So focus mode on the ASI Air, it takes a small bin of the image, so it'll take an area of interest shot, and that's why nothing's really changing because it's looking at a much smaller profile of the star, well, of the picture. Let's see if we can go back to preview. Yeah. See, what I've done before is if you've got an autofocuser and you don't know where the new focus position is, what I've done previously is said, right, go to something like 15,000. And then while it's moving, I take an image. So that way, if you're completely out of focus, as in to the point there's no stars in the image, 
if you're moving while you're in mode taking a photo, if the stars appear during that exposure, you know, now you know you're in that range. Say for example, focus is 12,000 position. At 10,000 to 15,000, I'll do a step from 10,000 to 15,000, take an image, and then what I can see in that exposure is, does the star even appear? Because if it starts appearing, that means it's it falls in that spot. Now I'm getting to the point where it is, do I actually have enough back focus is what I'm worried about. Oh. Yeah, we've reached the end. So that's the tube completely extended now. And we're not in focus, are we? No, I need an extension. And now I'm gonna to have to rack in to, oh, I don't know. Let's go back up to 15,000. So again, this way, and I'll take this 10 second exposure while it's moving inwards. And I'll see what the star's doing. Currently, I don't know what this means. So we're still going inwards. I want this to go smaller. Yeah, we're gonna hit focus. AM106, we're gonna center. And what we can now see is the new framing with its rotation. I think I'm gonna want it at an angle so I can rotate it afterwards. Ah, uh, yeah, I think I like that framing. It's got just a bit of a curve on it. Enough for me. All right. I think I'll take a two and a half minute test shot. Well, three minutes, should I say. That's the exposures I'm going to be using. And if that's any good, I'll set the plan up and get going. <laughs> 